It can't be denied that there is real interest surrounding the existence of Nibiru. For hundreds of years, the search has been on to rediscover this hidden planet. But why are we searching for something that we have never seen and how do we even know it exists? You may be surprised to learn that even though we have not discovered this planet in modern times, it is almost impossible for it not to exist and we are going to tell you why. There is ancient and even modern evidence that can't be accounted for but anything else than the existence of another planet. Due to the large number of natural disasters that have happened on our planet, many people claim that it is due to the approach of Nibiru. Now, for those of you who see it as the destroyer of the Earth, we're not going to give you any false evidence that it is sitting behind the sun and approach is imminent. That is simply not the case. In fact, the planet is so far away at the moment that it may even orbit another sun in a figure 8 type orbit. This would explain a highly irregular orbit period and could even blow open the doors to once again rewrite what we have been led to believe about our position in the solar system. I mean, it could even be 20,000 years from now before it becomes visible through a high-powered space telescope. Does that not just blow your mind apart? Anyway guys, there are six credible pieces of evidence that could prove Nibiru exists. Now listen, we are not saying it definitely exists, but we are saying that there is something out there in the perimeter of our solar system that when discovered, it will not only confirm our wildest suspicion, but answer the questions of which we are already coming up with answers to. Just wait until you hear this. At number 6, Irregularities in Neptune and Uranus's Orbit Following the discovery of the planet Neptune in 1846, there has been considerable speculation that another planet exists beyond its orbit, a region we call the Trans-Neptunian Region. The search was underway in the mid-19th century and culminated at the start of the 20th with Percival Law's quest for Planet X. Lau proposed the Planet X hypothesis to explain apparent discrepancies in the orbits of the giant planets, particularly Uranus and Neptune speculating that the gravity of a large unseen ninth planet could have perturbed Uranus enough to account for the irregularities. Clyde Tombaugh's discovery of Pluto in 1930 appeared to validate Lau's hypothesis and Pluto was officially named the ninth planet. But in 1978, Pluto was conclusively determined to be too small for its gravity to affect the giant planets, resulting in a brief search for a tenth planet. The search was largely abandoned in the early 1990s. But in 2014, based on similarities of the orbits of a group of recently discovered extreme trans-Neptunian planets, astronomers hypothesized the existence of a super-Earth planet, 15 times the mass of the Earth and beyond 200 astronomical units with the possibility of a high inclined orbit at some 1500 astronomical units. One astronomical unit being the distance between the Earth and the Sun. In 2016, further work showed that this unknown distant planet is likely on an inclined, highly eccentric orbit. There is clear evidence out there, but because the planet is so far away, constant observations are close to impossible. In at number 5. Sumerian text and depictions. How could a civilization dating back 5,000 years have had more advanced knowledge of astronomy than we have today? That is a question we have long lost the answers to, but the ancient Sumerians depicted and documented the first Nibiru some 3,500 years before the birth of Christ. There are even descriptions of beings that came down from this planet of the crossing to mine Earth for gold in order to save the atmosphere of Nibiru on its closest approach to the sun. These beings are known to the ancients as the Anuaki and they were worshipped on Earth as gods. Although the Sumerian astronomical texts are incredibly difficult to decipher, it has been done. One thing that is there for all to see and easily understood is of course the very famous depictions of Nibiru. This can't be denied but incredibly we are yet to fully understand astronomy as the ancient Sumerians did all those thousands of years ago. Maybe we are overcomplicating our understanding of the sky, maybe we are looking too hard and too far that we are missing the obvious answers to the deepest questions. At number 4 on our list, Carlos Munoz Ferrada. His name is forever linked to Nibiru. Carlos Munoz Ferrada predicted with extraordinary accuracy numerous earthquakes in South America during the last century. He did this by making direct correlations between specific astronomical phenomena and various catastrophic earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. His most significant prediction regards the future arrival of a comet planet Nibiru. Ferrada calls it a comet planet because it has the size of the planet and the speed and elliptical orbit of a comet. He explains that this is due to the catastrophic approach of the comet planet which will eventually pass 14 million kilometers away from Earth, accelerating the great geophysical change, which is already slowing and advancing. The Chilean astronomer specified the mass, velocity, orbital time, the trajectory, and the terrible consequences being produced by Nibiru on our solar system. He recognized Munoz Ferrada for his mathematical accuracy in regards to the earthquake that devastated the southernmost country in South America in 1939. 
The accuracy was to such an extent that Ferrata even set the date of the earthquake, which was, which was published in the Journal of Conception. He was only wrong by a difference of two hours. The disaster claimed the lives of 60,000 people. He also announced the earthquakes of 1960 and 1985. There will come a time when Nibiru will be permanently visible as a second sun and in common conditions in broad daylight. This is why it was rediscovered in the 80s by the orbiting infrared telescope IRAS. Carlos did not mention when this planet would come close to the Earth, only that world events would intensify as the years go by. The closer the planet gets, the more cataclysmic the events. We still cannot see the planet. So as we said at the start of the video, we are looking at a time frame of over 20,000 years at least before the events get to any significant intensity. So don't worry guys. We may already have colonized the galaxy and invented lightspeed by that point. At number 3, Cataclysms on Earth. At intervals throughout Earth's history there has been world cataclysms or extinction level events. From giants to dinosaurs and even 20-foot insects, the Earth has been under occupation for millions of years. And just like all other species that have become extinct, we will also come to an end at some point in Earth's history. The most recent cataclysm that we know of came 12,000 years ago, but unfortunately have no idea why it happened. We showed you in our previous selection that the Sumerian astronomers depicted the planet Nibiru on its way out of its highly elliptical orbit. So this could actually be the cause of the ancient event of 12,000 years ago, and the Sumerians were still able to view this planet on its way back to the outer solar system. It would explain how the Sumerians had the advanced knowledge possibly gifted from the Anuaki of Nibiru, as they mined the Earth for gold. Now we are completely aware of how crazy and wild of an idea this sounds, but let's just keep an open mind. In at number 2, the Asteroid Belt. The Asteroid Belt is a strange place. Located between planets Mars and Jupiter, it is thought by many that the asteroid belt was in fact once a planet that collided with the Nibiru system. Beginning in 1801, tiny rock and metallic objects were discovered to be orbiting the Sun at about this distance. Since then, several hundred thousand large asteroids have been catalogued, and it is estimated that there are more than a million large asteroids. Among catastrophists, there is substantial disagreement on the matter of this missing fifth planet from the Sun, and the place of which lies the Great Band, the debris of an enormous planet which the Sumerians knew as Tiamat. Ancient Sumerian texts indicate that Tiamat was struck by a large planet, which moved into its present orbit, and also created the Earth's moon and the asteroid belt. In his books, The Twelfth Planet in the Cosmic Code, Zechariah Stitchin outlines this celestial battle, as described in the Babylonian text Enuma Elish. The planet Nibiru, as it came into the solar system on its clockwise retrograde elliptical course, struck Tiamat, which was moving in its ordained counterclockwise orbit. According to Stitchin's well-known translations, one of Nibiru's satellites struck Tiamat first, followed by two more of its moons. Nibiru then itself, an enormous cosmic entity, struck Tiamat, smashing one half of the planet into pieces, which became what the Sumerians called the Great Band. The remaining half of the planet, which was struck by a smaller moon of Nibiru, was catapulted into a new orbit, along with a chunk of material which became its moon. According to the Enuma Elish, Tiamat's original moons were dispersed, many changing the direction of their orbits and rotations creating Earth's moon and the asteroid belt. There is indeed evidence of this great cataclysm in our solar system today. And finally, number one on our list, Planet 9, Speck of Light Observed. In January of 2016, researchers at Caltech stunned the world by announcing the discovery of the Planet 9. A speck of light was observed and astronomers of, and stargazers around the world are waiting in anticipation for more confirmation. Though the NASA researchers are stressing that this is only a speck of light that has been observed, they can confirm that they are on the verge of discovering the planet. So basically, the 200 year search for Nibiru is going to happen within 20 years. The object which the researchers have nicknamed Planet 9 could have a mass of about 10 times that of Earth and orbit about 20 times farther than the Sun on an average than Neptune. It may take 20,000 Earth years to make one full orbit around the Sun. We have noticed some of the dwarf planets and other small icy objects tend to follow orbits that cluster together. By analyzing these orbits, the Caltech team predicted the possibility that a large, previously undiscovered planet may be hiding far beyond Pluto. They estimate the gravity of this potential planet may explain the unusual orbits of those Kuiper Belt objects. So there you have it. What do you think of our selections here? We hope you have enjoyed the evidence we have chosen to present to you. 
We are fully aware of the false information surrounding this planet and the people who post the lies are doing a serious discredit to the people who are actively and historically dedicating their lives in the search for the planet Nibiru. Small shockwaves can make a huge difference, so please share our videos. My name's Seth from the Vertex Films YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and remember, the ways by which we arrive at knowledge are hardly less wonderful than the discovery of these things themselves.